Yes, so very good afternoon. Right, so yesterday we first completed with SQC 1. Yes, quality control for firms that perform audits and reviews of historical financial information and other assurance and related services engagement. In which we talked about the elements of the quality control system, namely LEHEM. Right, and in that we talked about engagement performance five points. One, there should be proper direction, supervision and review. Then EQCR, engagement quality control review. The work of one CA being reviewed by another CA in the same firm before the report is issued. An objective evaluation of the significant judgments made. Right, then we talked about consultation, then engagement documentation. And the last one, the differences of opinion. Right. Then we also saw the objectives of SQC 1 and SA 220 together. You know, SQC 1 objectives that the firm complies with the professional standards and legal regulatory requirements. The firm's reports issued are appropriate in the circumstances. And SA 220, what are the two objectives? The audit complies with the professional standards and the legal regulatory requirements. The auditor's report issued is appropriate auditing and then after that we started with SA 210 which is on agreeing the terms of audit engagement the engagement letter being issued by the auditor to the client and very important in the engagement letter first we talked about the preconditions for an audit right preconditions management only if you accept these conditions we are coming for the audit otherwise we are not in those preconditions, one, we had the main precondition, the acceptability of the AFRF, which is being used by the management in the preparation of the financial statements, and of whether the AFRF is acceptable to the auditor. So if an Indian company is preparing financial statements as per accounting standard schedule 3, then that is an AFRF, and a, which is acceptable to the auditor. And once the AFRF is acceptable, acceptable, then five other preconditions. Okay, management's responsibility, preparation and presentation of financial statements in accordance with the AFRF. Design, implementation and maintenance of internal financial controls. Then to provide the auditor with all information of which the management is aware and which is relevant for the audit. Any additional information which the auditor would require from management those charged with governance and unrestricted access to persons within the entity from whom the auditor considers it necessary to obtain audit evidence. Right? So those were the preconditions. After the preconditions, we talked about the contents of the engagement letter divided under three. The principal contents, the additional matters, and the when relevant additional matters. Principal contents, the objective and scope. The responsibilities of the auditor, the responsibilities of the management, the identification of the AFRF, and the anticipated or the expected form and content of the report. Then when the relevant additional matters, arrangements concerning the involvement of the branch auditors, internal auditors, auditors expert, predecessor auditor, auditors liability, working papers and any further agreements. And additional matters in the engagement letter, elaborate on the scope of audit, unavoidable risk that some material misstatements may not be detected, composition of the audit team, audit planning, then auditor will require written representations. Management will inform the auditor of subsequent events. They will provide the auditor with the draft financial statements and other information. Then how the fees are going to be charged and a billing. Then the audit process is subject to peer review and also the acknowledgement of the audit engagement letter. Then limitation on scope imposed prior to acceptance of engagement. Auditor may decide not to accept only. After acceptance of engagement, management is telling from tomorrow, don't ask any information regarding inventory. Yes, ask the reasons, the circumstances which necessitated the change. It may provide a lower level of assurance because of which the auditor is unable to obtain sufficient appropriate audit evidence. One in that case qualified opinion or disclaimer of opinion or he may also decide to withdraw from the engagement. 
as such for a recurring audit you are not required to send a new engagement letter for each period but there are circumstances which warrant the auditor to send a new engagement letter for each audit and a seven changes and one misunderstanding change in management change in ownership change in nature and size of the entity's business change in afrf change in laws and regulations change in other reporting requirement change in the terms of engagement or any misunderstanding with the client as to the terms of engagement afrf is unacceptable say german gap but it is required by law regulation that is why they are preparing so it says auditor you can accept such an engagement but three conditions one you will not use the phrase true and fair then what phrase is he going to use prepared then after that management will provide additional disclosures in the financial statements and auditor will also make additional disclosures in the audit report then right then after that we studied sa 230 which was on audit documentation what is audit documentation a record of the audit procedures performed the evidence obtained and the conclusions reached right then we talked about the first question in that essay the nature and purpose of audit documentation ke okay, why audit file should be made in an audit right so main purpose is served by audit documentation basis for conclusion that the overall objective of the audit has been achieved and that the audit has been planned and performed in accordance with the standards and legal regulatory requirements an additional purpose is served by audit documentation assist the engagement team to plan and perform the audit to direct supervise and review the work done accountability for work done record of reference for future audits quality control reviews and inspections and external inspections as required by legal regulatory requirements then we talked about the form content and extent of audit documentation and the seven points in the form content and extent of audit documentation the audit file should describe what were the audit procedures performed evidence obtained conclusions reached matters communicated to tcwg any departure from any sa any new audit report issued in exceptional circumstances and any inconsistent other information and then we talked about the factors affecting the form content and extent of audit documentation means the factors affecting the file size okay when will your audit file become fatter you know so when your client is fatter you know the size and complexity of the entity the risks of material misstatement we said go go and the risks of material misstatement the procedures performed the evidence obtained the conclusions reached the exceptions identified and also the audit methodology and the tools used then working papers we said opc you remember opc objective procedure conclusion objective procedure conclusion we saw one working paper of debtors also so also so test performed the information obtained the conclusions reached all is to be given in the working papers and then we talked about the acm the audit completion memorandum you know it is a summary of all the significant matters identified during the audit that is the cream how they were addressed and that includes cross references as to where the related information can be found in the audit documentation any essay not followed you can mention it in the acm and again what is the big time advantage of the acm efficient effective reviews right an audit documentation is whose property it is the property of the auditor at his discretion he may make portions of or extracts from his working papers available to the clients yes and confidentiality not to disclose the secrets of the client unless required by law or taken prior consent of the client for the same so right there was one three mark question asked in the exam you should auditor provide information to the regulators and third parties right so one what did we say as per chartered accountants act and you are not supposed to breach confidentiality second also as per sa 200 you need to comply with confidentiality requirement third we said as per sqc 1 audit documentation is the property of the auditor and fourth we said sa 230 additional purposes served by audit documentation external inspections as required by legal regulatory requirements 
So what does it say? The auditor may provide access to his Yes, a very good afternoon. Right, so we completed with SA 240, the auditor's responsibilities relating to fraud in an audit of financial statements. Right, so an exclusive standard only talking about the audit procedures in relation to fraud. Right, and as per SA 240, there are two types of fraud. And a fraudulent financial reporting and misappropriation of assets. Right, and then fraud risk factors is equal to events, conditions or situations which provide an incentive, pressure or which put an opportunity, provide an opportunity to commit a fraud. And then we also said clause 10 of Caro 2016. You know, any fraud on or by the company, by its officers or employee, noticed or reported during the year. And then 143.12, duty to report the fraud to central government. And then we also said management override of controls is equal to JV testing. And then we talked about the risk assessment procedures and the responses in SA 240. Right, risk assessment procedures, they were IIAFRF, inquiries of management and others within the entity, inquiries of TCWG, analytical procedures and the evaluation of the fraud risk factors. Inquiries of management, have they done the risk assessment due to fraud? What are the responses of the management to the risk assessed? What communication has the management done with TCWG regarding fraud? Fraud. What communication with the employees regarding the unethical behavior of the employees? And also the communication, the inquiries with the internal auditors. Then TCWG, do they have knowledge of any fraud? And also how are they supervising the management process? Then analytical procedures, wherever it is unusual fluctuation, again it could be an RMM due to fraud and then you need to do the evaluation of the fraud risk factors, again which have been first divided under the two types of fraud, fraudulent financial reporting and misappropriation of assets. Under fraudulent financial reporting, we said management characteristics and influence over the control environment, industry conditions operating characteristics and financial stability. So rather the indications of going concern. You know, financial indications, operating indications of going concern. And then over here we said attitudes and rationalizations, pressures and incentives and opportunities to commit a fraud. Right? Then after that, whatever risk we assess in SA 240 is called as fraud risk. And to presume fraud risk in SA 240, one, revenue recognition, and second, MOC, management override of controls. And then what are the responses of the auditor? More of an attitude of professional skepticism, more experienced staff, increased evaluation of accounting principles and practices, and more sensitivity to the possibility of management override of controls. Yes, it says this risk is nevertheless present in all entities. It may only vary from entity to entity. So as an auditor, we need to make inquiries of the management, inquiries of those individuals who are passing these journal entries into the system. Then test check journal entries at the end of the period as well as throughout the period. Also check the amount. The amount over here is going to be an estimate. And estimates means there could be management bias and that we audit it in accordance with SA 540. And then in the audit procedures, Hannah, we discuss firstly, secondly, thirdly, and finally. Firstly, to check whether the financial statements are materially misstated due to fraud, and also whether the audit risk requires a revision, you know, revision of the assessment of audit risk. Second, the impact of the fraud on the financial statements and the auditor's report. Thirdly, communicate to management TCWG. And finally, this will also impact the reliability of the written representations obtained as per SA 580. And then towards the end of the answer, you have to write Dasbara. Hanno, clause 10 of Caro 2016 and section of the standards. See, anyways, you don't have an option, so you better enjoy. Okay. Yes, anyways, you have to study, so better be happy and study. 
ओके राइट सो यस्टरडे वी स्टार्टेड विथ एस ए टू फिफ्टी है ना कंसिडरेशन ऑफ लॉज एंड रेगुलेशन इन द नॉडेट ऑफ फाइनेंशियल स्टेटमेंट फॉर द पर्पज ऑफ एस ए टू फिफ्टी द लॉज एंड रेगुलेशन हैव बीन डिवाइडेड अंडर टू वन दोज लॉज एंड रेगुलेशन विच हैव अ डायरेक्ट इफेक्ट राइट लाइक एग्जाम्पल इनकम टैक्स एक्ट and second the other laws and regulations which may have a material effect on the financial statements in case of non compliance example environmental laws labor laws as an auditor for direct laws and regulations you need to obtain the sufficient appropriate audit evidence and for the other laws and regulations you need to perform the specified audit procedures that was the objective of the essay then we talked about the audit procedures i told you first point shivaji maharaj sit on the horse hai na understand make inquiries of the management ke what are the laws and regulations are you maintaining any register do you have a legal department have you communicated to the employees what are the internal controls to comply with law then after that second point obtain sufficient appropriate evidence for laws and regulations which have a direct effect third point for other laws and regulations perform the specified audit procedures that is inquiries of management and inspection of correspondence with the regulatory authorities then procedure number 4 remain alert throughout the audit to identify instances of non compliance because what is the funda of the auditor directly ask and indirectly check and whose responsibility to comply with laws and regulations management responsibility so obtain the written representations from the management in this regard okay all laws and regulations which are applicable to the entity have been complied with and any non compliances have been disclosed to the auditor right then after that by performing these procedures if you come across a non compliance first you need to check the effect of the non compliance on the financial statements one it may affect the going concern second it may affect the true and fair view third it may require a disclosure or it may lead to fines penalties damages litigations or so then the reporting of non compliance is to be done to the management to the shareholders and to the regulators to the management you will communicate it to the next higher level of management however if there is no next higher level then seek legal advice right to the shareholders by modifying your opinion in accordance with sa 705 and to the regulator depending upon the requirements of laws and regulations and then we talked about the indications of non compliance है ना इंडिकेटर बिकॉज ऑफ विच यू मे थिंक कुछ तो नॉन कंप्लायस होगा पेमेंट्स है ना कैन यू टेल मी द लिस्ट ऑफ पेमेंट्स फाइन्स पेनल्टीज ब्राइब्स एक्सेसिव सेल्स कमीशन पेमेंट फॉर परचेस विच इज सिग्निफिकेंटली अब और बिलो द मार्केट प्राइस पेमेंट टू नंबर ऑफ बैंक अकाउंट्स पेमेंट्स टू कंपनीज रजिस्टर्ड इन टैक्स सेवन वेरी गुड payments through bearer checks payments to another country other than the country from where the goods services originated or bolo payments without exchange control documentation payment of high legal fees during the year and then other than payment what are the other points investigations by regulatory organization then information system failure and the adverse media comment Right. then after that we came to sa 260 communication with those charged with governance what whom when and how is to whom to communicate to the appropriate persons as defined in the organization structure and if not defined you need third one factors affecting the form of communication next standard that we studied sa 265 communicating deficiencies in internal control to those charged with governance and management and a letter of weakness or the management letter pune to bangalore solapur parcel step 1 of the standard identify the deficiency go to the root cause conclude that it is a deficiency step 2 check whether the deficiency identified is a significant deficiency in internal control here the standard has given us the indicators of significant deficiency and now we said management override of controls 
like management fraud transactions in which management is financially interested not appropriately scrutinized inappropriate remedial action management's inability to oversee preparation of financial statements then no risk assessment process ineffective risk assessment process ineffective responses to address such risks misstatements detected by the auditor and prior period of items coming in the current period financial statements then after that we said communicate in writing to tcwg and communicate to the management on a timely basis at such a point of time ke tcwg can discharge their oversight responsibilities so listed entities before approval of financial statements other entities you can also communicate at a later date and what are the contents of the report updsl what is updsl the users get this report hai na the letter of weakness ka report is for the audit committee board of directors management and others within the organization second the purpose of the audit is to reach bangalore hai na to express an opinion on the financial statements the description of the deficiencies and their potential effect then sufficient information so that the users can understand the context of your communication and limited to those deficiencies that have been identified during the audit according to the auditor which merit the attention of the the other points investigations by regulatory organization then information system failure and the adverse media comment right then after that we came to sa260 communication with those charged with governance what whom when and how is yes, to whom to communicate to the appropriate persons as defined in the organization structure and if not defined you need to have an agreement with the client what to communicate tcwg is equal to ifrs auditors independence significant findings from the audit auditors responsibilities in relation to the financial statement audit and the planned scope and timing of the audit in the significant findings from the audit we have five points one significant qualitative aspects of the entity's accounting practices including policies estimates and disclosures second one significant difficulties encountered in performing the audit on a You remember unavailability of expected information unexpected effort required unwillingness of management to do the assessment of going concern then yes un unexpected unnecessarily brief time given for the completion of the audit then significant delays in management providing information and restrictions on the scope imposed by the management then after that third point unless tcwg are also involved in managing the entity the significant matters and written representations the auditor is requesting under significant matters we have five matters a b c d e hai you na know, the appointment of the auditor then the accounting practices the fees the other services then the changes in the business conditions then the consultations taken by the management of other accountants then disagreements with the management regarding any accounting treatment or so and any significant events or transactions of the entity then after that after significant difficulties then what would it what was unless tcwg are also involved in managing the entity then what was the fourth point in significant findings circumstances that may affect the form and content of the report and the last one any other matters which in the auditor's professional judgment should be communicated to tcwg right then after that we said factors affecting the form of communication whether to communicate in writing whether to communicate orally whether to communicate in detail or in summarized form structured or unstructured manner yes what is it depends on whether that matter to be communicated to tcwg is it also a key audit matter whether the matter has already been resolved whether the management has communicated the matter then the size structure of the entity the control environment the legal regulatory requirements then any special purpose financial statements are also being prepared the expectations of tcwg the ongoing dialogue between the auditor and tcwg and changes in the membership of the governing body in the organization 
right that was factors affecting the form of communication i told you 260 revised standard first april 2017 so more questions expected in your exams and now two questions one significant difficulties encountered next significant matters identified during the audit and third one factors affecting the form of communication next standard that we yes a very good afternoon right so we completed with sa 299 then sa 402 sae 3402 sa 600 and sa 610 right 299 was regarding the responsibility of the joint auditors yes wherein the joint auditor shall divide the work by mutual discussion right and any area of work which is important in nature may not be divided and may be carried on by all the joint auditors and then this division of work amongst the joint auditors should be documented it should be in writing it should be signed by all the joint auditors it could also be communicated to the client and it facilitates the coordination of work amongst the joint auditors sharing of responsibility who is responsible for the work which is divided the respective joint auditor to whom that work is allotted and what are those areas where the joint auditors are jointly and severally responsible yes work for areas for work which is not divided then and not deciding upon the nature timing and extent of the audit procedures matter relating to all brought to the attention by one of the joint auditor whether financial statements are in compliance with the legal regulatory requirements whether audit report is in accordance with the laws and regulations and whether they have obtained the informations and explanations from the management right generally they agree upon a common report to be issued but in case of differences of opinion they may report separately not bound by the views of majority of joint auditors next after that we came to sa402 and sae3402 and 402 first we saw 10 definitions user auditor user entity service auditor service organization sub service organization complementary user entity controls type 1 report type 2 report and inclusive method and the carve out method then what was the first step of the standard understand and then the nature of the services provided by the service organization that was the atf may top 10 and a samir and company so smir the significance of the services provided by the service organization the materiality of the transactions the degree of interaction between the user entity and the service organization and the nature of relationship again between the user entity and the service organization then sources to obtain information regarding service organization then audit procedures what were the audit procedures first check whether there are any complementary user entity controls however unable to obtain evidence from those then you will have to perform toc at the service organization three options one obtain a type 1 or a type 2 report if available second visit contact the service organization and third send another auditor on your behalf right in case of a modified opinion the user auditor can make a reference to the work of the service auditor but continues to be responsible then sae 3402 we said suitable criteria and a description of the system design of the system and operating effectiveness of the system description of the system whether it is a type 1 or whether it is a type 2 report the nature of services provided the types of services provided the procedures by which transactions are initiated recorded processed corrected and a correction of incorrect information dealing with significant events and conditions process used to prepare the reports complementary user entity the controls control objectives and the five components of control then in case of a type 2 report any changes in the control during the period and third in the description give this information is for a broad range of common users 
then in the design of the system have they done the risk assessment and whether accordingly the controls have been suitably designed to provide a reasonable assurance and then last one whether these controls have been consistently applied throughout the period right so that was SAE 3402 assurance reports on controls at a service organization then we came to SA 600 you know, SA 600, then SA 610, and then SA 620. Right? SA 600 is regarding using the work of another auditor. This another auditor means the branch auditor. Right? And what were the points for the branch auditor? 1 C cube. And then we had ADV, and C cube ADV. What was C cube ADV? One consider the competence of the branch auditor if he is not a chartered accountant. Second, coordinate with the other auditor while planning the work. Consider the significant findings of the other auditor. Advise the other auditor as to the significant accounting, auditing and reporting requirements. Discuss with the other auditor if need be and visit the other auditor if required. You understand? So we said, na ekdam chote bhai ke jaise. Why? Because continues to be responsible. And if the branch auditor has modified his opinion, not compulsory that company auditor also has to modify. But what he needs to do, he needs to document in his audit file the reason how he has treated the qualification. The manner of dealing with the qualifications or the adverse remarks in the branch auditor's report. Yes, the principal auditor has to document. And then we said the principal auditor should clearly make mentioned in his report the extent to which the financial statements have been audited by the other auditor so we also saw an example of the other matter paragraph i think page number 1.142 and other matter okay we did not audit the financial statements and audit the eight branches which have been audited by the other auditor right so that was sa 600 using the work of another auditor 610 using the work of the internal auditor and here we again set general evaluation and the specific evaluation of the internal audit function and then whether to take any direct assistance from the internal auditors and in that case to direct supervise and review the work of the internal auditors you remember direct uh, direct assistance from the internal auditors in that case you need to direct supervise and review their work under general evaluation we had three points oca what were those three points one the objectivity you know, the status the value the organizational status of the internal audit function Second, the technical competence of the internal auditors. Are they the members of relevant professional bodies? Do they have the knowledge of the AFRF? What are the training hiring policies of the firm? Do they have the technical training and proficiency as internal auditors? And the last one, the systematic and disciplined approach including the quality control. Right? And specific evaluation, what did we say? Whether the work of internal auditors has been properly planned, performed, supervised, reviewed and documented. Whether sufficient, appropriate evidence has been obtained by the internal auditors. And the conclusions reached have been supported by the work performed. You know, conclusions reached have been supported by the work performed. Right, so that was regarding the specific evaluation. Say specifically, I want to see what work the internal auditors have done with respect to expenditure. And so that's the specific evaluation. And then we also talked about the direct assistance. On what basis do you decide whether to take direct assistance from the internal auditors? One, the judgment involved, the risks of material misstatement, then the objectivity, then the competence of the internal auditors, and also the organizational status of the internal auditors. Right, so this is up to what we had completed in the last class. Right, so now coming to the next standard, which is SA 620 and the legal regulatory requirements, the auditor's report issued is appropriate in the circumstances. Right, then after that we came to SA 300, planning and audit of financial statements. Right, first we talked over there about the objectives or the advantages of audit planning, AAPPEE. -E. 
appropriate attention is devoted to important areas of audit potential problems are promptly identified work is conducted in an efficient effective manner then after that proper dsr of the work then also it talked about coordination with the other auditors and experts and the selection of the engagement team members then an important question which we discussed in sa 300 was regarding the preliminary engagement activities right for a recurring audit engagement and for an initial audit engagement for an initial audit engagement we had two extra points no objection certificate if any from the predecessor auditor and knowledge of client's business then engagement letter wherein the pre conditions for an audit would have been given then whether you can comply with the ethical requirements including independence these two points will be for both for recurring audit also and for initial audit also and for a recurring audit the continuance of the client relationship and for an initial audit the acceptance of the client relationship then after that we talked about the factors to be considered in the development of an overall audit strategy or the audit plan so we said strategy comes before which is later on followed by a plan is the strategy would be deciding upon the objective hai na and plan would be actually performing the procedures right what does it say as and when there is a change in strategy you may also have to make a change in your plan and your plan you know it says you can't prepare the entire plan at one time like if once you perform the plan for performing risk assessment procedures then you need to wait to perform the risk assessment procedures because the results of risk assessment procedures will help you to determine the further audit procedures and then a very important question factors to be considered in the development of the overall audit plan or the audit strategy the objective and scope of the engagement then after that professional judgment if which area significant effort is going to be required then the results of the preliminary engagement activities then the laws and regulations which are applicable to the entity and how the entity is complying with those laws and regulations then the risk assessment procedures then nature timing and extent of resources selection of engagement team members and the dsr right then to be completed with sa 315 330 and 450 yes which was regarding the risk response and reporting yes sa 315 identifying and assessing the risks of material misstatement through understanding the entity and its environment and over there in that standard first we saw the sources of misstatement and you know, odi and a omission of financial statement element account or information omission of disclosures which is required in accordance with gap disclosures not in conformity with gap difference between the judgments of the auditor and the management incorrect accounting estimate inaccuracy in gathering or processing data from which the financial statements are prepared then after that we talked about the risk assessment procedures i a o r you know inquiries of management and others within the entity analytical procedures observation and inspection and then also a few related activities then after that understanding the entity and its environment you need to understand six things you know external internal then the past the future and the accounting system and the internal control system external the industry regulatory and the other external factors internal the nature of the entity including its operations and ownership structure governance structure measurement and review of the entity's financial performance the objective strategies and the related business risks the selection and application of accounting policies and also the five components of the internal control system namely crism what is crism control environment risk assessment information system and communication control activities and monitoring then we also saw information technology what are the benefits and what are the risks associated with the use of information technology and then after that finally we assess the risk of material misstatement which could be at the 
financial statement level or assertion level and further what did we study ke assertion level further you need to check which assertion is the risk right then after that we saw ke when does an rmm require special audit consideration yani ke when does it become an sr and a significant risk when the risk is a risk due to fraud related parties complexity of the transactions unusual transactions significant measurement uncertainty or significant changes in the economic regulatory environment and then we saw some examples of conditions and events that may indicate an rmm like you know operations in regions that are economically unstable and you know, operations then the lack of personnel with appropriate financial reporting skills investigations by regulatory organization shortages of supplies or then change in the supply chain of the company right so those were conditions and events which indicate a rmm right then after sa315 we came to sa330 the auditors responses to assess risks so first in the standard we talked about the overall responses to the rmm at the financial statement level and we said more 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 and a more of an attitude of professional skepticism more experienced staff more supervision more using work of an expert more extensive audit evidence more persuasive audit evidence more number of locations to be covered more of an element of surprise in the audit more procedures at the period and date rather than at an interim date and it says a combined approach of toc and substantive would be an effective approach right then after that we talked about tests of control and substantive procedures what if you have performed toc in the previous audit and that there is no change in control since they were last tested then its standard says that auditor you need to perform the retesting of controls at least once in every third audit you know if based on understanding of the entity there is no change in control since they were last tested the auditor should perform the retesting of controls at least once in every third audit so one audit you did toc two audits you can go on a holiday then again the fourth audit you'll have to do toc again two holidays then again toc however what are the circumstances which will warrant the auditor to reduce the period of retesting of controls weak control environment weak monitoring of controls weak general it controls changes in the personnel changes in the circumstances nature and size and also inappropriate manual intervention and then substantive procedures we have char prakar you understand no test of details substantive analytical agreeing the financial statements to the underlying records and examining material journal entries and what was the first line in substantive procedures irrespective of the assessed rmm the auditor shall design and perform substantive procedures for each material class of transaction account balance presentation and disclosure right so substantive procedures and why are we performing to obtain the sufficient appropriate audit evidence what if you don't get the sufficient appropriate audit evidence then attempt to obtain further evidence by performing alternative procedures what if you still don't get the evidence then qualified opinion or a disclaimer of opinion right then in sa 330 they have also described what do you mean by nature timing and extent of audit procedures ke kaise check karna hai kab check karna hai aur kitna check karna hai right then we came to the last in the series sa 450 which was regarding evaluation of misstatements identified during the audit hai na identified misstatements uncorrected misstatements corrected misstatements factual misstatements judgmental misstatements and projected misstatements right then we said step 1 in the standard auditor accumulate all the misstatements identified during the audit other than those which are clearly trivial then for these identified misstatements you need to check whether the revision of the overall audit strategy is necessary yes the audit strategy may require revision one if the misstatements have already exceeded materiality or where they may exceed materiality then identified misstatements cmc 
है ना कम्युनिकेट टू मैनेजमेंट एंड रिक्वेस्ट टू करेक्ट नाउ वॉट इज देयर विद यू अनकरेक्टेड मिस स्टेटमेंट्स नाउ फॉर अनकरेक्टेड मिस स्टेटमेंट्स यू शैल री असेस मटीरियालिटी बट वाइल री असेसिंग मटीरियालिटी नॉट ओनली टू कंसिडर द अनकरेक्टेड मिस स्टेटमेंट्स रिलेटेड टू द करेंट ईयर बट ऑल्सो दोज रिलेटेड टू द प्रीवियस ईयर और ईयर्स देन अनकरेक्टेड मिस स्टेटमेंट सी एम सी कम्युनिकेट टू मैनेजमेंट रिक्वेस्ट टू करेक्ट एंड इफ दे डोंट अग्री रिटर्न रिप्रेजेंटेशन फ्रॉम द मैनेजमेंट कम्युनिकेट टू दोज चार्ज विद गवर्नेंस एंड मॉडिफाई ओपिनियन इन अकॉर्डिंग विद एस ए सेवन जीरो फाइव right yes so yesterday this was the risk based audit approach which we discussed hai na this is the risk based audit approach hai na risk response and reporting 315 330 450 hai na three best friends together hai na these are the three standards which we discussed yesterday and then 450 i had discussed one more question with you circumstances due to which misstatement could be evaluated as material you know we said all examples of qualitative material misstatement it affects the ratios it affects the debt covenants it affects the regulatory requirement it affects the segment information right so those were all examples combination of materiality involvement of experts involvement of other auditors and also the nature timing and extent of the audit procedures <clears throat> then after the standard we came to sa 320 materiality in planning and performing an audit right the concept of materiality any item or information which might influence the decision making of the users so for the auditor it is a matter of auditor's perception it is his professional judgment and you know, regarding what would be that amount which might influence the decision making of the users materiality can be set for overall financial information as well as for individual account balances materiality is both quantitative as well as qualitative in nature some items which individually may not be material but the aggregate may be material hai na performance materiality and then sometimes even the statutory provisions contain an element of materiality right then we said performance materiality an amount set by the auditor below materiality in order to reduce to an appropriately low level the probability that the aggregate of uncorrected plus undetected misstatements could exceed materiality hai na chhota 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 milke mota hai na aggregate of individually immaterial misstatements may exceed materiality this is a risk in the audit and to mitigate this risk in the audit the auditor sets one more level of materiality below materiality which is called as performance materiality yes it is also nothing but tolerable misstatement as will be discussed in sa 530 then we said there is an inverse relationship between materiality and audit risk and for the determination of materiality the auditor uses the concept of benchmarking Yes, you need to select an appropriate benchmark from the financial information. To that chosen benchmark, you need to apply a percentage, and whatever is the resulting amount, that is going to be materiality. Factors to be considered in the identification of an appropriate benchmark: Venus. right the well volatility of the benchmark the elements of the financial information the nature of the entity the needs of the users and the financial structure of the entity right then after that revision of materiality as the audit progresses yes is can the auditor revise materiality as the audit progresses yes whenever there is a change in circumstances changes in the auditor's understanding any new information any additional information and then one more point we said so that to check more samples in you know auditor initially sets a lower level of materiality and then it when if the time comes for evaluating the results he increases the amount of materiality right so that was sa320 materiality in planning and performing an audit so this standard they made reference to three things no three essays one sa320 is talking about materiality in planning and performing an audit 
then essay 450 is talking about materiality while doing the evaluation of the identified and uncorrected misstatements in the audit and essay 300 says that auditor you need to consider materiality right from the planning stage of the audit again yani ke while identifying and assessing the risk of material misstatement so when we saw one case study you know these were the three references to materiality which we saw in that and 320, 450 and 300. Then after that we came to, so you can just put this chart over there in your books. I know on a post-it or something near 320. So that again and again when you go through it, you know, you'll remember. And okay, material or wherever the chart is, uh, whatever, in whichever answer it has been discussed in the books. Right, so 320, then 450 and then 300. And essay 320, materiality reference. And a materiality in planning and performing an audit. CWG. Right, then after that we started with the 500 series. Right, 500 we've already done audit evidence. Then yesterday we started with 501. Audit evidence specific consideration for selected items. Three selected items over there. Existence and condition of inventory, completeness of litigations and claims and presentation and disclosure of segment information. What was the first one? Existence and condition of inventory divided under two. Inventory of the client which is with the client and second inventory of the client but which is lying with the third party. Inventory with the client attend the physical verification count being conducted by the management at the year end date unless impracticable. And do what? Evaluate management's instructions, observe the count procedures, inspect the inventory, re-perform test counts and also reconcile with the actual inventory records. Not possible on year end date, attend on some alternative date and additionally check for the intervening transactions. Yes, not possible to attend inventory count even on year end date or an alternative date, then in that case you need to perform the alternative audit procedures. Still you are unable to obtain sufficient appropriate audit evidence, then modify opinion in accordance with SA 705. This part of the answer we have already marked it as ATFA top 10. Yes, very important. Second one, inventory lying with the third party, confirmation from the third party. You go and perform do the inspection of inventory lying with the third party. Send another auditor on your behalf. Obtain the third party auditor's report. Inspect the documentation regarding the movement of goods. And again, where inventory has been given as a collateral, you can obtain a confirmation from the third party. Second one, completeness of litigations and claims corresponding to AS 29. And provisions, contingent liabilities. Completeness matlab what? All. Whether all litigations and claims which should have been accounted for or disclosed. Whether they have been accounted for or disclosed. Matlab it could be provision or it could be a contingent liability. Step 1, Shivaji Maharaj sit on the horse, understand, make inquiries of the management. What is the funda of the auditor? Directly ask, indirectly check. So indirectly review the legal expenses account, inspect the minutes of the meeting and also obtain the written representations from the management. These are normal audit procedures when completeness of litigations and claims has not been identified or assessed as an RMM. These are two Gulab Jamun procedures. And these are two procedures. Then when it has been identified as an RMM, then what are the additional procedures which you need to perform? Right? Direct communication with the lawyers. Hana? Direct communication with the lawyers. Not possible. Then send letter of inquiry prepared by the management. Right? When you check for completeness, you are bound to check for valuation and measurement in accordance with SA 540, accounting estimates. 
management law prohibits you from obtaining the information perform alternative procedures still you are unable to obtain evidence then modify opinion in accordance with sa 705 so in the exam when any question is asked regarding audit of provisions in that answer also three points compulsorily have to come legal expenses account minutes of the meeting and communication with lawyers Pakka, these three points have to come legal expenses account minutes of the meeting and direct communication with the lawyers right so this is up to what we have already completed yesterday now coming to the last selected item of essay 501 which is regarding the presentation and disclosure of segment information which is regarding the presentation and disclosure of segment information yes can anybody tell me which is the corresponding accounting standard as 17, AS 17 no segment reporting what does as 17 say okay the business performance of the company can be classified under business segment or geographical segment out of that one has to be the primary segment and the other will be the secondary segment one out of them has to be the primary segment and the other will be the secondary segment so like you know if business segment is geographical like you say you know the company is into salt and software that is the primary segment and then after that you have to give the geographical segment say inside in India and outside India you understand inside India and outside India so business segment and geographical segment and primary segment and secondary segment okay now we have to study how to do the audit of the same so say in the notes to account of reliance industries the segment information has been given how to do the audit of that segment information is what we are discussing in SA 501 say in the exams you know in the audit paper it comes question number seven write short notes on presentation and disclosure of segment information so now students who have not studied a standard or who don't know that there is also auditing standard about this will start writing the companies to which AS 17 is applicable then how do you identify the segments then you know they have to write segment income segment expense segment profit segment assets segment liability unallocable income and expense and you have to write all that then they'll write business segment geographical segment primary segment secondary segment one and a half page answer they will write and then after coming out from the exam hall I don't know why but they still do that analysis okay, how much they will get you understand so now when they do this analysis they think you know presentation and disclosure of segment information one and a half page answer everything I've written perfect however bad examiner checks my paper two marks to nowhere two marks to I mean, two marks to aak band karke but this much to I am going to get in that okay and by doing all this two mark one mark three mark four mark somehow you manage to bring the total at 45 and just make yourself happy yes yes audit clear this time understand and then when you see the paper you know the result okay that time you see 32 and then you start cursing I see AI you understand it is like this only and whatever okay but then that's what the difference no between what is asked and what has been written and they have asked you how will you do the audit of segment information you have written what is segment information so certainly you are not going to get marks you understand so now presentation and disclosure of segment information whose responsibility management's responsibility so procedure number one understand make inquiries of the management so go to the management and ask the management the segment information which is given in the notes please tell us how have you prepared the segment information so they say are you see this time to know we had no time only to prepare segment so what we did you know this time new idea new idea what is the new idea that they have made april to march 12 months now so they say 12 months ka 12 segments we've shown april ka revenue march uh, Feb, um, april ka revenue may ka revenue june july august september CSA is abhi to thoda time ho gaya hai CA ban ke matlab abhi it's been a time that since I have studied AS 17 but last what I remember of AS 17 is something called as business segment geographical segment hai na, primary and secondary 
I don't know whether AS 17 has been modified to include time segments also. So you've understood the method. What they are giving? Month-wise segments. Now, is this segment information in accordance with the AFRF? No. Is their method in accordance with the AFRF? No. So second thing, once you've understood their method, you need to check whether the method is in accordance with the AFRF. Here, what is the relevant AFRF? AS 17. And you need to check, have they complied with the requirement of AS 17? So whether the method is in accordance with the AFRF. So they've explained you the method. Okay, this is how we prepare segment information. So that is only design. This is how we prepare. But actually, have you prepared using that method? Yani ke second one, test the application of the method. Otherwise, design is there, but there is no implementation. Hai na? Method batate vakti ye bataya, but actually calculate karte vak some other, hai na? actually prepare karte vak some another method. So understand the method, then check whether the method is in accordance with the AFRF, then test the application of the method. And the last one, you can also perform some analytical procedures for the segment information. I think I have given you this example. It affects the segment information, salt and software. And a salt ka revenue went in software and software ka revenue came in salt. But total revenue was proper. I told you, na, last year salt ka revenue 300 crore, this year salt ka revenue 3000 crore. Last year software revenue 2700 crore, this year software revenue 400 crore. You understand now? So what has happened? Swapping error, na, transposition error, what you call. Software ka revenue has come in salt and salt ka revenue has gone in software. So that is why this when you will come to know when you perform analytical for the segment. Because total level pe to dono tally hone wala. This is 3000 crore and this is 3400 crore. Total is barabar. So what does it also say? You need to perform the analytical procedures for the segment information. Right? And these are the audit procedures which you need to perform for the same. Yes, presentation and disclosure of segment information. Does everybody get that? Okay, so that completes SA501. And I've already seen the question bank yesterday only with you. And in the question bank you've seen, they are only asking questions regarding existence and condition of inventory with the client. Attend the physical verification count. Right, so it would be AS17. Then test the application of the method. And last one, perform certain analytical procedures for the segment information. Then after that, we came to a very important standard. The standard itself is an ATF, SA505, which is on external confirmations, which is a direct written response to the auditor from a third party. One of the most reliable evidence which can be obtained by the auditor. For the auditor to get an external confirmation from the third party, first the auditor has to send to the third party a confirmation request. This confirmation request could be a positive confirmation request or a negative confirmation request or open or closed. Positive whether the third party agrees or disagrees. When in both cases they have to reply, it is positive. And negative only when the third party disagrees, it has to reply. So what are the situations where negative confirmations may be used? Inherent and control risk is low, balances are low, error rate is low and the reason for auditor to believe that the respondent will disregard these requests is also low. An open confirmation request where the amount is kept blank and closed confirmation request wherein the amount is mentioned. Then we talked about the external confirmation procedure. And selecting the items for confirmation, designing the confirmation request, communicating the confirmation request to the appropriate third party, obtaining the response and evaluating the information. Selecting items for confirmation, you selected the items and management refuses. 
to allow the auditor to send the confirmation request. So first you will ask the reasons to the management. Check for the validity and the reasonableness of the reasons given by the management. You may also alter the nature, timing and extent of the other audit procedures and also your audit risk assessment. Then you will perform alternative procedures to obtain the sufficient appropriate audit evidence. And if you are unable to obtain the evidence or if you think that the reasons given by the management are unreasonable, then then you may call modify your opinion in accordance with SA 705. One of the common requests, what to say, common reason which is given by the management why they refuse to send a confirmation request is that an untimely confirmation request may aggravate the sensitive negotiation between the client and the third party. And the untimely confirmation request may aggravate the sensitive negotiation between the client and the third party. Then factors to be considered in designing the confirmation request, Frena. You know, the form of confirmation request conditions likely to affect the reliability of the information, the intended respondent, then the prior experience for similar you know, prior periods, then after that the nature of information being confirmed and the assertion being addressed. And evaluating the information, the evidence obtained. Right, then evidence provided by other audit procedures, the reliability of the evidence, whether any additional evidence is needed and also any misstatement revealed from the response received. Then after that we came to SA 510, initial audit engagements, opening balances, where either the last year was not audited or it was audited by a predecessor auditor. Procedure number one, auditor, you need to check whether closing balances of the preceding period, have they been correctly brought forward to the current period. Procedure number three, to check whether accounting policies have been consistently applied. And procedure number two, to check whether there are any misstatement in the opening balances. That is divided under two possibilities. Prior period was audited, prior period not audited. Prior period audited, place reliance on the work of the predecessor auditor unless there is an indication of misstatement. Obtain the audit report of the predecessor auditor and again check the consistent application of the accounting policies. Prior period unaudited. Now you need to obtain the evidence for the opening balances and for that the connected records may be examined. Right, then after that we came to SAS, then we said if you are unable to obtain evidence regarding opening balances, qualified or disclaimer. And what if there is a material misstatement in the opening balances, qualified or adverse. Right, then we came to SA 520, which is on analytical procedures, evaluation of financial information through analysis of plausible relationships among financial and non-financial data. Wherever it is inconsistent, we investigate in detail. SA 315, we talk about analytical procedures at the planning stage. And SA 520, we talk about analytical at the substantive procedure stage and near the end of the audit, that is conclusion stage. That means analytical are to be followed throughout the audit. While performing analytical procedures on the current year financial information, yato you can do some comparisons or you can check for certain relationships. Comparison of current year financial information can be done with the prior periods or it can be done with similar industry information or it can be done with the anticipated results, any yani the budgets. Yes, relationship of financial information, you can check it with the non-financial information or you can do some trend analysis or some ratio analysis. Then when you come to substantive, there is a competition going on between two. Detailed checking or analytical checking? Detailed or analytical? First, you should see whether analytical can be done. Because detail to can always be done. So what we discussed, factors to be considered while using substantive analytical procedures. Suitability, reliability, expectation and materiality. And a suitability, depending upon the effectiveness of controls, the RMM, the nature, the assertion. We decide whether it is suitable, the materiality of the item, whether it is suitable to perform analytical. Then the reliability of the data. 
the source of the data, the nature of the information, the controls over the preparation of the data, and the comparability of the data. Then are you able to build up an expectation to identify a misstatement? And what is the difference between expected value and actual value that is acceptable without further investigation? So that is nothing but materiality. Right. And analytical towards the end of the audit, okay, whatever is your understanding and whatever is your conclusion, whether these two are consistent is why you perform analytical near the end of the audit. Next standard which we started with, SA530, which is on audit sampling. Right, we saw a few definitions over there like population, then sampling risk. The risk that the sample may not represent the population. The risk that the auditor reaches an erroneous conclusion on account of the sample selected. The risk that the conclusion which the auditor has formed by checking the sample and the conclusion which he would have formed had he checked the entire population could be different is sampling risk. And two things happen because of sampling risk. Either your opinion may go wrong or it may lead to additional work. An inappropriate audit opinion or it may lead to additional work. We saw for both na, tests of control also and test of details also. Then after that we saw non-sampling risk, then stratification, subdivision of the population. Then tolerable misstatement, a monetary amount set by the auditor about which he seeks to obtain an appropriate level of assurance that the actual misstatement in the population does not exceed the monetary amount set by the auditor. And the probability that aggregate of individually immaterial misstatements may exceed materiality. Right? So it says tolerable misstatement is nothing but the application of performance materiality as discussed in SA 320. It could be the same amount or it could be a lower amount. And then the last question which we did was steps in a sampling plan. Hannah, OPC, Hannah, we started with that and I told you this question is R, R raised to 10, not asked so far. So first define the audit objective to which the sample relates. Then population, number of population items, sampling unit, sample selection method, sample parameters such as confidence level and accuracy, then sample size, then sample selection technique, draw the sample, evaluate the sample, check whether any adjustment to the original plan is needed, evaluate the changes and then finally, finally you need to formulate. Yes, so very good afternoon. Right, so yesterday we first completed with SA530, which is on audit sampling, right, in which we first discussed the sample selection methods, random selection, systematic selection, monetary unit sampling, haphazard selection, and the block selection. And then in SA530, we also discussed what are the advantages of statistical sampling. Okay, it yields the same result. It's an objective method. You're taking only calculated risk, right? There is what you say that based on the theory of mathematics and probability, you can quantify the sampling risk. Deviation of errors can be done. And sample size does not increase with the increase in the population. Then after that, we came to a showroom standard, SA540, auditing of accounting estimates, including fair value accounting estimates and related disclosures. Right, so accounting estimates and approximation of a monetary amount in the absence of precise means of measurement. And whenever you are doing the audit of an accounting estimate, you need to check how much is the estimation uncertainty. And okay, how much is the inherent lack of precession in its measurement. And the more the degree of estimation uncertainty, the more would be the risk of material misstatement. Right, what are the areas where you could say there is high estimation? estimation uncertainty, right, pending litigations, then management techniques, you know, which are not generally recognized, then after that prior period financial statements, the estimates and the actual outcome, and they are making use of those specialized models. Then fair value accounting estimate, wherever in the determination of the accounting estimate, you have to determine the fair value. 
like you know share based payments assets held for disposal complex financial instruments which are not actively traded then goodwill intangible assets valuation all those are fair value accounting estimates right and we said whenever you are doing the audit of an estimate you always need to be skeptical regarding the indicators of management bias that is lack of neutrality by the management and then in 540 we discuss the risk assessment procedures and the responses right what were the risk assessment procedures understand make inquiries of the methods being used by the management understand the internal controls in the organization check the assumptions and data which is being used by the management for the computation of estimates okay whether the assumptions are reasonable and whether the data is objective also perform analytical procedures yani ke compare with past experience compare with independent estimates then you may also use the work of an expert then review the formula check the calculations check for any subsequent events and also check compliance with the requirements of the afrf right then after that we came to the responses now the auditor starts raising his voice and okay whether the method of measurement used by the management is it appropriate in the circumstances then what does it say how did the management address estimation uncertainty how alternative assumptions have been rejected by the management then management's decision to recognize or not to recognize an estimate in the financial statements audit evidence about compliance with the afrf and you also need to obtain the written representations from the management next standard which we came entire standard being an atf sa 550 which is on related parties and we said four terms no related parties and then rtid relationships transactions identified and disclosed and then in 550 also we talked about the risk assessment procedures and the responses what were the risk assessment procedures understand you know the entities related party relationships and transactions and then maintaining alertness when reviewing records and documents right which records and documents can give you information regarding related party yes the statutory registers the minutes of the meeting confirmations from third parties investments made during the year income tax returns unusual transactions joint ventures entered during the year life insurance policies taken contracts renegotiated during the year papers filed with sebi prospectus right these are sources and a shareholders register right these are the records and documents and you know, from where you can get information regarding the related parties and then sharing the related party information with the members of the engagement team then after that we talked about the responses what was the first response of the auditor for what was the first response of the auditor for unidentified undisclosed related party relationships and transactions do you remember nrp and a newly identified related parties so what are the audit responses or the procedures which you will follow for newly identified related parties promptly communicate to all members of engagement team and to the management then management two things to identify all the transactions with these newly identified parties and also what is the weakness in their system then perform additional procedures whether there are any more such unidentified related parties then perform substantive procedures for these newly identified related parties and if the auditor comes to know that the non disclosure to the auditor was intentional then he also needs to consider the implications on fraud in accordance with sa 240 right then second response of the auditor was for related party transactions which are outside the normal course of business oncb hai na a b c d who authorized who approved entering into such a transaction outside the normal course of business and that too with a related party second what is the business rationale then third whether the terms of transactions are they consistent with the management's explanation and whether the transaction has been accounted for and disclosed in accordance with the afrf yes do you get that then third response of the auditor was for related party transactions are they the arms length transaction 
then audit evidence about disclosures in accordance with the AFRF, that is AS18, and again obtain the written representations from the management. So I told you now generally when a question is asked regarding related parties, what all references are you going to make? One SA 550, then AS 18, then Companies Act 2013, and then also Clause 13 of CARO 2016, which is regarding related parties. Right? Then after SA 550, we studied yesterday SA 560, which is on subsequent events. You know, events occurring after the date of the financial statements till the date of the auditor's report and facts that become known to the auditor after the date of the auditor's report. After the date of financial statements till the date of auditor's report, it could be a type 1 event or it could be a type 2 event. Type 1 event will require adjustment and type 2 event will require disclosure. As an auditor for type 1, type 2, we would like to obtain sufficient appropriate audit evidence. And for facts, that had these facts been known to the auditor on the date of the report, it would have caused the auditor to amend the auditor's report. And to facts, you need to respond appropriately. Right, then what were the audit procedures to identify subsequent events? What was the first and last point? Hanna, understand, make inquiries of the management. And last point, obtain the written representations from the management. And Beach May, what were the points? Read the latest. Right, the minutes of the meetings. Hanna, read the latest, the minutes of the meeting. Then the budgets, the cash flow forecasts, etc. Then we set the interim financial statements and, uh, and also the latest position of the legal cases. Right? Also read about the latest position of the legal cases. Right? So those were the audit procedures to identify subsequent events. And what inquiries of the management will you do regarding subsequent events? Hana, any assets have been destroyed, any doubt regarding the recoverability of the assets, any assets have been seized by government authorities, any assets have been disposed of, then any change in accounting policy, any major accounting entry, any change in accounting estimate, any issue of shares or debentures, and also any new borrowings, Hana, any borrowing facilities also. Right? That is inquiries of management regarding subsequent events. Subsequent events related to the branch up to the date of audit report of branch auditor, branch auditor's responsibility. And beyond that, they are the responsibility of the company auditor. And then facts that become known to the auditor after the date of the audit report has been further divided under two. Before the financial statements are issued and after the financial statements are issued. Before and after, in both cases, DDI. Discuss the matter with the management, determine whether the financial statements need amendment and inquire as to how management intends to address the issue. Right, then in both cases, two, two possibilities. Management amends, does not amend, management amends, management does not amend. Before, after the date of the report, but before the financial statements are issued and management amends. It's called as revision of financial statements. So what does it say? Carry out additional audit procedures restricted to that amendment. Now there will be two dates in your audit report. One the original date and one the date on which you completed the additional checking. And third, in your new audit report, you will mention it in the emphasis of matcha paragraph. Okay, the additional procedures are restricted to that amendment and it's not that we've done the entire audit again and management does not amend, then auditor should modify opinion in accordance with SA 705 and the steps to be taken by the auditor to prevent reliance on the previously issued audit report. After the date of the audit report, after the financial statements are issued and if management amends, it's called a restatement of accounts. So carry out the audit procedures as would be required in the circumstances and also verify the steps which have been taken by the management. And again, if management does not amend, then auditor needs to take steps to prevent reliance on the previously issued audit report. Right. Yes, so this is up to what we had completed yesterday. Hana, SA 6. Yes, a very good afternoon. 
right so yesterday we first completed with the 500 series yes in which we studied essay 570 which is regarding going concern yes a fundamental accounting assumption used in the preparation of financial statements and what was the first sentence for the auditor for the answer which we studied the auditor has the responsibility to obtain sufficient appropriate audit evidence about the appropriateness of the management's use of going concern assumption in the preparation and presentation of financial statements and whether any material uncertainty exists because of which the auditor may have a significant doubt about the entity's ability to continue as a going concern and then we said as there are events or conditions which cast a significant doubt on the entity's ability to continue as a going concern it may not be able to realize its assets and discharge its liabilities in the normal course of business as an auditor we should ask the management to make the adequate disclosures in the financial statements and also refer to them in our audit report however if the management refuses to make the adequate disclosures in the financial statements then the auditor shall issue a qualified opinion or an adverse opinion as may be appropriate right so these were the co three common sentences which we saw then after that in essay 550 first we talked about the risk assessment procedures make inquiries of the management have they performed or are they yet to perform the assessment of going concern and also you as an auditor remain alert throughout the audit to check whether there are any events or conditions because of which you may doubt the going concern and here we studied the financial indications the operating indications and the other indications of going concern then if there is any event or condition because of which you may doubt the going concern then in that case what are the additional procedures to be performed by the auditor when when events or conditions have been identified because of which you doubt the going concern assumption hai yes. na events or conditions have been identified so what are the additional procedures we said all the audit procedures of sa 560 subsequent events hai na read the latest minutes of the meeting budgets cash flow forecast interim financial statements position of legal cases all the audit procedures for subsequent event all the inquiries of the management regarding subsequent events then if management has not yet performed the assessment of going concern we shall request the management to perform the assessment we will also check what are the future plans of the management yes and also the feasibility of those plans what could be the future plans of the management to liquidate assets to reduce or delay expenditure to borrow money to restructure debt to increase ownership equity then we will also take the prospective financial information the forecast from the client we will also check the data the reliability of the data whether the assumptions are adequate and we shall also obtain the written representations from the management and then last one we came to the going concern and the audit report and a going concern assumption is appropriate unmodified opinion second going concern assumption is questionable but resolved by management explanation again unmodified with a material uncertainty related to going concern paragraph hai na after the opinion and the basis for opinion paragraph going concern questionable and management disclosures also found to be inadequate then qualified or adverse depending upon the pervasiveness and if going concern assumption is inappropriate in that case it would be an adverse opinion right so very important standard we've seen in the case studies you know that 10 questions have been there you know from rtp suggested put together right then after that in the last standard in the 500 series was sa 580 written representations which is not a substitute for the normal audit procedures to be performed by the auditor then it is mainly to be used as a corroborative audit evidence that is it should be reasonable and consistent with the other audit evidence available then the person giving the representation on behalf of the management should be well informed of the matter and where it is a matter of intention in that case representation is the only evidence available with the auditor 
right then we said contents of written representation have you fulfilled the preconditions acknowledged in the terms of engagement and second the representations required by the other standards on auditing then management's refusal to provide the written representations to the auditor dd doubts regarding the integrity of the management and second you first you will discuss the matter with the management and second you will also have doubts regarding the integrity of the management and as they are not giving you written representation it may also be considered as a limitation on scope and then modify opinion in accordance with 705 next one the reliability of written representation cr we said i i doubts regarding the integrity of the in integrity ethical values diligence of the management you will also doubt the reliability of the written representations and second if whatever they have given in the representation is inconsistent with the other audit evidence available first you will attempt to resolve the inconsistency however if it remains unresolved then again you may conclude that written representations are not reliable and the impact will come on the auditor's report date of written representation as near as practicable but not after the date of the audit report period the period covered by the auditor's opinion and what if there is a change in management during this period it does not diminish the responsibility of the current management to provide the representation for the whole of the relevant period right then after that we came to the two standards in the 700 series sa 710 and sa 720 is 710 comparative information corresponding figures and comparative financial statements corresponding figures where only previous year figures are given the auditor's opinion is only for the current period comparative financial statements where entire previous year set of financial statements is given and the auditor's opinion is for all the periods right now indian company schedule 3 requirement is corresponding figures right then what are the procedures which you need to perform for this comparative information one agree the balances with the prior period hai na current year financial statements previous year column and last year financial statements current year column you need to tick tock agree the balances with the prior period check whether accounting policies have been consistently applied any misstatement in the comparative information not reported for that follow sa 560 and obtain written representations from the management including for any prior period items then we is yes, after that we talked about the reporting on comparative is yes, and two possibilities corresponding figures and comparative financial statements corresponding figures last year there was a misstatement and it was reported and it was not reported and under reported we say two things it is resolved it is not resolved if it is resolved no need to mention about it in the current year report however it is not resolved then modify the current report last year there was a misstatement but you did not report it last year modify current opinion with respect to corresponding figure prior period was audited by predecessor auditor at the matter paragraph ke prior period has been audited by predecessor auditor type of opinion and the date of report and prior period unaudited again at the matter paragraph that prior period figures are unaudited comparative financial statements there is a difference in your opinion as compared to prior period reasons to be given in the other matter paragraph prior period audited by predecessor auditor again other matter paragraph and if you think that the opinion of the previous auditor is not right he should have issued another report so the auditor shall inform the management and the current auditor will inform the management the management will inform the predecessor auditor and then he shall follow sa 560 and again prior period unaudited then again other matter paragraph then we came to the last one in the 700 series sa 720 the auditor's responsibility in relation to other information hai na it talks about other information in documents containing the audited financial statements so we said contents of annual report minus financial statements is equal to other information 
and what did we say whatever is the financial information in the other information is it consistent with the financial statements and for that auditor you need to read the other information preferably before the date of audit report otherwise as soon as practicable why do you want to read it to check the consistency and what if there is an inconsistency then you need to decide what requires revision and then we developed a chart we read the other information before the date of the report after the date of the report in both cases inconsistency identified and in that case you need to decide what requires revision and then two two possibilities revision of financial statements is necessary revision of other information is necessary revision of audited financial statements is necessary revision of other information is necessary revision of financial statements is necessary management does not agree modify opinion in accordance with 705 revision of other information is necessary management does not agree communicate to tcwg other matter paragraph or withdraw from the engagement revision of audited financial statements is necessary follow sa 560 facts that become known to the auditor after the date of the auditor's report and revision of other information is necessary if management agrees then ensure that they have done the revision and if management does not agree then notify those charged with governance right yes so this is up to what we have already completed yesterday and we did yes so very good afternoon right so yesterday we first completed with sa 620 which is regarding using the work of an auditor's expert yes the entire standard being an atf and we said expert an individual or organization having specialized knowledge in a field other than accounting or auditing this expert he could be the management's expert or he could be the auditor's expert management's expert sa 500 auditor's expert sa 620 an auditor's expert has been further divided under auditor's internal expert and auditor's external expert for auditor's internal expert you need to check whether the firm's quality control policies and procedures have been complied with then we talked of what are the situations where the auditor may use the work of an expert so we said valuations right then actuarial calculation estimation of oil and gas reserves valuation of environmental liabilities then the interpretation of contract laws and regulations that's the legal matters and analysis of unusual or complex tax compliance issues so that is the tax matters then we came to the flow of the standard what was the first point in the flow determining the need for an auditor's expert is there a need and we said is there a garage to appoint an expert so the nature of the matter how much is the risk of material misstatement what are the alternative sources of evidence then auditor's previous knowledge and experience regarding the field of the expert and also the firm quality control policies and procedures then you finalize can okay, know we will have to appoint an expert then searching for the expert so for that we do the evaluation of the expert for that we look into the cco the competence the capability and the objectivity of the auditor's expert from where can i get information regarding the cco of that expert and you know, discussions with that expert discussions with others who are familiar with the work of that expert personal experience with the previous work done by that expert knowledge of that expert's qualification any books or papers published by that expert and the firm's quality control policies and procedures then after that there will be an agreement between the auditor and the expert making it very clear what is the nature scope and objective responsibilities of the auditor responsibilities of the expert the nature timing and extent of communication and for the need for the expert to observe the confidentiality requirements what are the factors affecting the agreement between the auditor and the expert you have not previously used the work of this expert 
then i told you making it clear the responsibilities of the auditor and the expert then the information that you are sharing with the expert is very sensitive and confidential the matter is very highly complex in nature then the extent to which you are going to use the work of the expert and also the legal regulatory requirements and the factors affecting the agreement between the auditor and the expert then working papers auditors internal expert they are a part of audit documentation and external expert they are the property of the yes the ex internal expert they are the property of the yes auditor it's a part of the audit documentation and external expert they are not the property of the auditor then very important evaluating the experts work so findings and conclusions are they consistent with the other audit evidence available the relevance and reasonableness of the assumptions and methods which are being used by the expert and the relevance accuracy and completeness of the source data being used by the expert findings and conclusions assumptions and methods and source data and what if the work of the expert is not adequate I tell him to do the further work or you do the further work can the auditor refer to the name of the expert in his report unmodified opinion he can no reference modified opinion he may make a reference but even though if he makes a reference ctbr and prior permission of the expert is to be taken so what did i tell you what are the three important questions of sa 620 one evaluation of expert cco second the sources to obtain information regarding the expert and third one the evaluation of the expert's work findings and conclusions assumptions and methods and the source data right yes this three are very important from sa 620 then after that we came to the entire 800 series 70 right so what's the title of sa 700 forming an opinion and reporting on financial statements in order to form an opinion in accordance with sa 700 auditor you need to check whether the overall objective of sa 200 has been achieved or not for that you need to check which is the afrf is it a compliance framework or is it a fair presentation framework if it is a compliance framework matlab say example only accounting standards and fair presentation means accounting standards plus a schedule 3 a compliance framework we will express an opinion saying prepared and for fair presentation true and fair right compliance framework we will check for six points adequate disclosure of accounting policies accounting policies are consistent with the afrf accounting estimates are reasonable information given in the financial statements is rrcu relevant reliable comparable understandable effect of material transactions and events has been adequately disclosed and the terminology used in the preparation of financial statements including the title of each financial statement is it appropriate and if it is a fair presentation framework then one more point okay whether the overall spc structure presentation content of the financial statements is such that it achieves a fair presentation right then once that we have formed an opinion then you need to accordingly prepare a report and then we talked about the contents of the audit report basic elements of the audit report we saw 13 points and up and we made sets of 2 2 2 2 5 sets of 2 and 1 set of 3 right so what were the first two in the set title and addressee and a independent auditors report to the members of abc company then after that what were the next two opinion and basis for opinion in the opinion first we have those five points no introductory paragraph we have audited the accompanying financial statements of abc company limited which comprise the balance sheet profit and loss cash flow notes for the year ended 31st march 2018 right so opinion and then over there we also had the true and fair view or prepared hai na give the information required by the act and give a true and fair view of the state of affairs profits or loss and cash flows of the entity right then after that basis for opinion now whether even if it's an unmodified opinion this paragraph will come only basis for opinion and what were the contents and basis for opinion sres that we have conducted our audit in accordance with the standards on auditing specified under section 14310 
Then what was the next one? This reference to the part or section of the audit report where the responsibilities of the auditor have been given. Then that the auditor has complied with the ethical requirements including independence. And we believe, what do you believe? That the audit evidence we have obtained is sufficient and appropriate to provide a basis for our audit opinion. So this was standards on auditing. This was the responsibilities of the auditor. Then ethical requirements including independence and then sufficient appropriate audit evidence. Right, so that was opinion and basis for opinion. Then after that, we talked about the next two. Going concern, if there is a material uncertainty, if there is a doubt regarding going concern. So this will not come when going concern is appropriate. Only when there is a doubt regarding going concern, this will be the next para. Then key audit matters, KAM, that we said we discussed in SA701. And a key audit matters, SA 701. So that was the next set. Then after that, what did we have? Management's responsibility for the standalone financial statements and the auditor's responsibility for the audit of financial statements. And a management's responsibility, 134 subsection 5 of the Companies Act 2013, which is director's responsibility statement. And a 3AG and IFC. And a accounting standards, accounting policies and estimates, accounting records, then going concern, and then adequate internal financial controls. All this is the responsibility of the board of directors, the management. Then auditor's responsibility, main point over there, reasonable assurance. And to obtain reasonable assurance that financial statements are free from material misstatement. And then they say reasonable assurance is a high level of assurance, but not a guarantee and okay, that all misstatements have been detected by the auditor. And then it says as an annexure or as a reference, you can give these additional points in the auditor's responsibility paragraph. What did we say? Priya without a Y. And a Priya without a Y, no? And then we had GST. P was what? Professional judgment and professional skepticism. Then after that, risk of material misstatement. Then internal financial controls. Then accounting policies and accounting estimates. Then going concern. Then structure, presentation, content of the financial statements is such that it achieves a fair presentation. And we have communicated to TCWG how we've complied with the ethical requirements including independence and any key audit matters identified during the audit right so that's a huge change in the auditor's responsibility paragraph right so management's responsibility and auditor's responsibility then after that you have the other matter and here is just one example of other matter when we go to 706 we'll see more such matters but here what they are saying when some of the branches have been audited by another auditor the principal auditor, the company auditor needs to write in his report that we did not audit the financial statements of 20 branches which have been audited by the other auditors. Then after that you have the report on the other legal regulatory requirements like Companies Act Section 143, Subsection 3, 10 additional matters of reporting to the statutory auditor. And now reporting on other legal regulatory requirements. So that's mainly 143.3 of the Companies Act 2013. So that's the next set. And then towards the end you have the SPD. What is SPD? Signature, place and date. And a signature with forms, registration number and membership number of the member. Then place the city where the report is signed and date only after the financial statements have been approved by the board and only after the auditor has obtained sufficient appropriate audit evidence. So I hope you are at least introduced to the contents of the audit report. Right? Once again, tell me what are the contents of the audit report. Title, addressee, opinion, basis for opinion, going concern, key audit matters, management's responsibility, auditor's responsibility, other matter, other reporting responsibilities. And then you have the SPD, signature, place and date. 
See, title, addressee, opinion, basis for opinion, management's responsibility, auditor's responsibility, other reporting responsibility, signature, place date, these are permanent members. And these are permanent members. Going concern will come only when there is a doubt regarding going concern. Key audit matter will come only when there is a key audit matter. Other matter paragraph, it will come in this example when branches have been audited by the branch auditors. Baki, this management's responsibility, auditor's responsibility, opinion, basis for opinion, these are fixed members. And these are always going to be coming in the report. Right? So these are the basic elements of the report as given in essay 700. Right? Then after that, we had started with essay 701, communicating key audit matters in the end and the effect on the audit of transactions and events that were significant. Right. Then after that, we came to a very important standard, SA 705, modifications to the opinion in the independent auditor's report. Yes, two reasons as to why an auditor may modify his opinion. One, yato, there is a material misstatement. Yato, the auditor is unable to obtain sufficient appropriate audit evidence. For these two reasons, you need to check is it material but not pervasive or material and pervasive. Material misstatement, material but not pervasive, qualified opinion, financial statements give a true and fair view except for the effect of. Right, material misstatement, material and pervasive financial statements are not true and fair, adverse opinion. Unable to obtain evidence material but not pervasive, again qualified opinion, except for the possible effect of the matters described in the basis for qualified opinion paragraph, the financial statements give a true and fair view. And unable to obtain sufficient appropriate audit evidence material and pervasive disclaimer of opinion because of the matters given in the basis for disclaimer of opinion paragraph. We are unable to obtain sufficient appropriate audit evidence and that is why we do not express an opinion on the financial statements. So little bit of material misstatement, then qualified. Lot of material misstatement, then adverse. Little bit evidence you did not get, then qualified. Lot of evidence you did not get, then disclaimer of opinion. Then we said that even the contents of the audit report undergo a change in case of a qualified opinion, in case of an adverse opinion, and in case of a disclaimer of opinion. Right. What are the changes to the contents in case of a qualified opinion? Title, addressee, qualified opinion, basis for qualified opinion. Right. Basis for qualified. First, you will write down the reasons for the qualification. And then S, R, E, S. In that S, we believe that the audit evidence we have obtained is sufficient and appropriate to provide a basis for our qualified opinion. Then after that, management's responsibility, auditor's responsibility, other reporting responsibilities, and then the signature, place, and date. Right? Adverse opinion, again, title, addressee, adverse opinion, basis for adverse opinion, again the reasons why you are issuing an adverse opinion and S, R, E, S and S we believe that the audit evidence we have obtained is sufficient and appropriate to provide a basis for our adverse opinion. Then management's responsibility, auditor's responsibility, other reporting responsibilities and signature place and date. And one more, after the basis for qualified and after the basis for adverse, we will be putting the key audit matters. Okay, there are key audit matters other than those in the base, given in the basis for qualified opinion paragraph or there are no other key audit matters other than those given in the basis for qualified or adverse opinion paragraph. Then disclaimer of opinion, title, addressee. Then disclaimer of opinion, basis for disclaimer of opinion and you will only write the reasons as to why you are issuing a disclaimer of opinion. Then management's responsibility, auditor's responsibility, now SES. 
है ना एस स्टैंडर्ड ऑन ऑडिटिंग ई एथिकल रिक्वायरमेंट्स इंक्लूडिंग इंडिपेंडेंस एंड वी वर बिकॉज ऑफ द रीजन गिवन इन दी बेसिस फॉर डिस्कलेमर ऑफ ओपिनियन पैराग्राफ वी वर अनेबल टू ऑप्टेन सफिशियंट अप्रोप्रिएट ऑडिट एविडेंस देन अदर रिपोर्टिंग रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटीज एंड देन आफ्टर दैट यू हैव द सिग्नेचर प्लेस एंड डेट राइट देन आफ्टर एस ए सेवन जीरो फाइव ओके सेवन जीरो फाइव वी टॉक्ट अबाउट वन मोर थिंग consequence of an inability to obtain sufficient appropriate audit evidence due to a limitation on scope imposed by the management so first what you will do ki you think now this limitation on scope may lead to a modified opinion qualified or disclaimer first you will request the management to remove the limitation if the management refuses then you will perform alternative procedures to obtain sufficient appropriate audit evidence however even after performing the alternative procedures you are unable to obtain sufficient appropriate audit evidence and it is material but not pervasive then you will issue a qualified opinion and if it is material and pervasive then withdraw from the engagement or disclaimer of opinion and if you withdraw from the engagement management before withdrawing you need to communicate to tcwg the reasons for the withdrawal and we also went to section 140 subsection 2 resignation of the company auditor hai na before the expiry of his term so within 30 days from the date of resignation the auditor has to file form adt3 then after that we had started with sa701 communicating key audit matters in the independent auditors report है ना कम्युनिकेटिंग की ऑडिट मैटर्स एंड व्हाट वाज़ द फर्स्ट इंपॉर्टेंट टर्म ओवर देयर के मैटर्स ऑफ मोस्ट सिग्निफिकेंस एंड दीज आर द मैटर्स आउट ऑफ द मैटर्स व्हिच हैव बीन कम्युनिकेटेड टू टीसीडब्ल्यूजी एंड देन द स्कोप ऑफ द एसए वी से द की ऑडिट मैटर्स इज नॉट इज नॉट अ सब्स्टिट्यूट फॉर एम फॉर एम क्या है यू अंडरस्टैंड इज नॉट अ सब्स्टिट्यूट फॉर management may requiring to make disclosures in the financial statements as per the AFRF for a modified opinion to be issued in accordance with SA 705 then for a material uncertainty relating to going concern and a separate opinion on individual matters key audit matters is not a substitute for m hai na we said that yesterday and then after that we said determining the key audit matters so what were the matters we said one risk of material misstatement and significant risk hai na what are the rmm and the sr risks of material misstatement and significant risk then significant auditor judgment involved mainly areas where there is high estimation uncertainty right and then the effect on the audit of transactions and events which have occurred during the current period and an effect on the audit of the transactions and events which have occurred during the current period and what description do you have to give in the key audit matter paragraph okay why this is a key audit matter and how it has been addressed during the audit that is the description which you have to give in that paragraph okay then after that how to determine whether a particular matter is of most significance I think you had written down this answer yesterday, and the where you had a lot of interactions with the management, robust, in-depth, and frequent interactions with the management, as compared, related as relative to the other matters, this matter is more important. And a severe control deficiency identified, audit effort required, significant audit effort required, specialized skill or knowledge required, consultations required to be taken. You understand what were those? Those were matters where we said that these will help you to determine whether the matter was of most significance. And then, just coming to the last part of the essay, so this is up to what we had discussed yesterday. Now, coming to the last part of the essay, wherein say you have identified a key audit matter, but say law regulation tells you that you should not disclose this matter, or it is not in public interest, you know, that you tell this matter to the public. and it is not in the public interest and you should not disclose this matter so actually as an auditor you have identified it to be a key audit matter but what law regulation precludes the disclosure precludes matlab it does not allow hai na say company mein example there is a huge fraud which has taken place 
or there is some you know non compliance with law regulation which is there so you say i want to write this in the key audit matter but say law regulation or if it is not in public interest to write such matter in the report so then in that case what are the procedures which you should perform when you know there could be a case study in the exam that management is requested the auditor that in public interest they should not give the following matter in the key audit matter paragraph in the report as an auditor how would you deal with the situation so they are telling you it is not in public interest it is not required by law regulation you don't put this matter even though if it is a key audit matter so one what you will do you will understand from the management ki what exactly is the matter hai na understand the matter then very important it says you check the communication with the regulatory authorities hai na you check the communication with the regulatory authorities regarding that matter like you know listed company matters would be dealt in with by sebi banking company would be dealt in by rbi so communication with the regulatory authorities you understand you can also check the communication with the regulatory authorities regarding that particular matter then after that it says you encourage the management to disclose the matter encourage the management what they are telling it is not in public interest it is not required by law regulation but what does the standard say that auditor you please encourage the management ke management it's i think it's better we disclose it in the report hai na so encourage the management but still they say ke auditor no then what you can do always one option is there with you obtain the written representations otherwise what tomorrow you will go in jail they say auditor tumhe to pata tha fir bhi tumne nahi bataya still you didn't write it in the report so you obtain the written representations from the management regarding that matter then you also check the implications on the ethical requirements you also check the implications on the ethical requirements by not disclosing the matter do you know ethical requirements ioc cpt integrity objectivity professional competence and due care confidentiality professional behavior technical standards now again implications on the ethical requirement like you know you they will say ke okay, what auditor you didn't identify this matter you have not been competent in the audit so check the implications on the ethical requirement and say finally it's a matter of judgment you know ke okay, whether i should put it in the report or whether i should not put it in the report and because there is such huge amount of risk involved it says final option auditor go for a legal advice final option what to do ask some lawyer you know ask take some legal advice okay this is the matter law regulation says not to disclose management is also pressurizing us don't put it in the report but i think i should put it in the report so what should i do understand so it says that maybe you will have to spend some amount to the pay to the lawyer but it says you may take legal advice you understand what is the question very important i told you you know you should understand what's the question which is being asked that okay, there is a key audit matter which you have identified but management or law regulation does not permit the disclosure of that matter so what are the procedures which you will perform in such a situation ki tumhe to lagta hai ki ye report mein dalna chahiye but they are saying no so then what are the procedures first understand the matter then after that check the communication with the regulatory authorities and right, regarding that matter then encourage the management to make the disclosures they might be scared like right now people are scared to deposit the money into the bank account no because they know income tax scrutiny will start so encourage the management they say some day to you will have to face the you know problem then obtain the written representations from the management check implications on the ethical requirements and legal advice so in 701 i have made you write two questions in the class one regarding how to identify whether the matter is of most significance and second when in public interest the matter is not to be disclosed then what are the procedures to be performed by the auditor does everybody get that
Yes, so in that case, you it will be considered as limitation on scope. So you encourage management, and still they are not agreeing. So they will have some justification for the same. No, then then worst case, what you can do? Last case, take legal advice for the same. So only the second step will not be there because it's for regulatory is not there. In case of the other matter paragraph, hmm. No, see, uh, no, 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 no. It's the responsibility continues. Yes, yes. Uh, there is a rule, you know. In IPCC, you studied basic principles governing an audit, na? And that one basic principle is work performed by others. So, whichever can you use the work performed by others? Yes, but only CTBR. What is CTBR? Continues to be responsible. So, I writing in the report in the other matter paragraph that 20 branches have been audited by another auditor. Still, I continue to have the responsibility for those branches also. You understand? So that we anyways again see it in SA 600. Oh, yes, okay. That's a, that's a very important point. Anna. So that is what I told you. The determination not to communicate a key audit matter takes into account the facts and circumstances related to the matter. They are telling you, CA, please don't communicate this key audit matter. So what is the first step? Assist the auditor in understanding why the matter has not been publicly disclosed. And so understand. Then <clears throat> highlighting whether there have been any communications with the applicable regulatory enforcement or supervisory authorities. That's not there in the book. Okay, this I'm showing you from the text. Yes, any communications with the regulatory enforcement or supervisory authorities in relation to the matter. In particular, whether discussion, such discussions would appear to support management's assertion as to why public disclosure about the matter is not appropriate. Enabling the auditor to encourage and management and TCWG to make the public disclosure. So encouraging management TCWG to make the disclosure. Auditor may consider it necessary to obtain a written representation from the management. And regarding as to why public disclosure about the matter is not appropriate. So you can write down over there, public disclosure not appropriate. Matter about which public disclosure not appropriate. Matter about which public disclosure is not appropriate. It is such a key audit matter key about which public disclosure is not appropriate. Right, then it may also be necessary to for the auditor to consider the implications of communicating the matter in light of the relevant ethical requirements. You know, so implications on the ethical requirements. And the issues considered by the auditor regarding a decision of not to communicate a matter is complex and involves significant auditor judgment. According to from the date of resignation, the auditor has to file form ADT3 with company and ROC, and in case of a government company, also with CAC. Yes, that is the CNAG. Right, then after that, we talked about SA 706, that was regarding the emphasis of matter paragraph and other matter paragraph in the independent auditor's report. Is anything fundamental to the user's understanding, emphasis of matter. Anything relevant to the user's understanding, other matter. If you can give a clear reference to financial statements, then emphasis of matter. No such reference can be given, then other matter. Right, what should be the heading of emphasis of matter paragraph? It says emphasis of matter. This term should be there in the heading. Then clear reference to the financial statements and without modification of opinion. Can you give me examples of matters which could be emphasized in the emphasis of matter paragraph? Things which are prohibited uncertainty related to future outcome okay afrf is unacceptable but required by law or regulation management has prepared financial statements as per a special purpose framework facts have become known to the auditor after the date of the audit report substantial doubt regarding the going concern assumption of the entity major catastrophe early application of a new accounting standard you know, those are all examples of emphasis of matter paragraph. And other matter paragraph, what are the examples? 
Yes, at the matter paragraph, auditor wanted to resign because there was a limitation on scope, but he could not resign. The report is only for a specific set of users and a specific set of intended users and should not be distributed to or used by other parties and other third parties. Law regulation permits him to give further explanation and a client has asked him to perform some additional procedures and report upon the same. Another set of financial statements have been prepared. Right? So that is emphasis of matter paragraph and other matter paragraph in the independent auditor's report. And these two paragraphs, they don't have any fixed location. And they are floating. You understand? They may go anywhere. But then generally, on an average, title, addressee. Then opinion, basis for opinion. Then what we had seen in SA 700, going concern, key audit matters. So before key audit matters, I will write emphasis of matter and say after key audit matters, I may write other matter. Then management's responsibility, auditor's responsibility. Sometimes this other matter may come over here also when some of the branches have been audited by another auditor. Then you have the other reporting responsibilities and then you have the signature place and date. And this opinion basis for opinion will become qualified opinion, adverse opinion or disclaimer of opinion and basis for qualified opinion, basis for adverse opinion and basis for disclaimer of opinion. Right? So in case of a modified opinion, this is in case of an unmodified opinion and this is in case of a modified opinion, SA 705, modifications to the opinion. Right, so is the content of this key audit matters is coming from SA 701, emphasis of matter paragraph, SA 7.